What's going on YouTube? Today we're going to be breaking down the Bugatti Chiron 300 plus mile an hour top speed run. We're going to break down the physics of the run and then we're going to hop over to the drag race simulator to actually replicate the run and show you exactly what's happening at every point. Let's hop in. Okay, so let's start with what we do know about the run. We know that they reached a top speed of 304.77 miles an hour. They're using a low drag version of this car, although we don't know all the specs for it. So I'm estimating the coefficient of drag to be 0.3 versus 0.35 in a normal Chiron, and I'm estimating the frontal area to be 2.07 meters squared, exactly the same frontal area as a normal Chiron. Weight, you guessed it, I'm using a normal Chiron. We don't know the official weight of this car. And then I'm also adding 59 kilograms to make a nice round number for the driver and any other equipment they had in the car. Air density is interesting. So at sea level, air density is right around 1.2. However, they did this run in a little bit of elevation and it was pretty warm. So I went back and checked the weather for that day and I actually got the air pressure reading and I converted that to air density based on the temperature. So I got 1.175 and that's the number we're going to use for air density. And we know the power, it's 1600 PS or 1578 horsepower, which is the same as 1177 kilowatts. We're now going to calculate how much power this car should have to reach that top speed with all these given specs that I've listed on the screen. So the two forces that are acting on the car to slow it down are air resistance and rolling resistance. Air resistance is a much bigger force and has a bigger impact on actual top speed. So air resistance is one half rho, which is the density of air that I talked about earlier, multiplied by the velocity squared in meters per second, multiplied by the coefficient of drag of the car, so that's gonna be our 0.3 number, multiplied by the frontal area of the car, so that's gonna be our 2.07 meters squared. Rolling resistance is simpler and it's a linear equation, so it's just force of rolling resistance is equal to the coefficient of rolling resistance multiplied by the weight of the car. Coefficient of rolling resistance is a little bit tricky. So people will often use a standard of 0.015 as their value, but as cars actually increase in speed, the coefficient of rolling resistance also increases. So it's not quite a constant. Just to be safe, we're gonna use 0.025 in this case, and it might be a little bit lower, might be a little bit higher, but this value is really hard to measure. So that'll be a comfortable middle ground. And of course there's the basic physics equations, power equals force times velocity. So we're gonna use that equation to calculate how much power we need to get this car up to that 304 mile an hour mark. So you do a bunch of math. It's all on the screen if you want to go through it and pause the video. You see that you need 922.9 kilowatts to overcome air resistance at 304 miles an hour and only 70.8 kilowatts to overcome rolling resistance. So the total power you need is about 994 kilowatts. We know that cars do not put 100% of their power to the ground. There's something called drivetrain loss. In an all-wheel drive car like the Chiron, it's probably around 85%. And if you do the math with the actual output of the Chiron, we actually calculate the drivetrain efficiency to be about 84.4%. So now's the fun part. We're actually gonna replicate their top speed run in a physics-based drag race simulator. So let's hop over to that and I'll explain the setup. Okay, at this point, if you haven't seen the actual top speed run, go watch it. I'll put a link in the description below and post a comment. So let's explain the setup. The car is gonna come off a big sweeping turn. I'll put a picture on the screen of what that looks like. It's gonna be going 180 miles an hour and it's gonna have an 8.8 .8 kilometer straight to just go as fast as it can. So they have an 8.8 .8 kilometer straight to go as fast as they possibly can, but they actually need two kilometers to slow the car down. So they actually only have 6.8 kilometers to go as fast as they possibly can. I've set up the parameters just like the real life version in the simulator. So it's gonna be a 6.8 kilometer drag race, and we're gonna start at 180 miles an hour, and it's gonna be on a simulated street surface. Okay, so we're starting the race. It's gonna be from 180 miles an hour, just like I said. And we can see we're starting in fifth gear here and quick shift, it's pulling really hard at 220 miles an hour. And at about 240 or so, it's gonna shift into seventh gear. And disclaimer here, I actually don't know the seventh gear ratio of this car, they never released any information. I'm just estimating it based on the numbers that they provided for red line and how fast they've gone. And so you'll see in the top of seventh gear, we'll actually reach pretty close to red line. And as it keeps going through, I'll speed this part up a little bit, but I actually don't want to show the actual footage side by side. It might be cool for you at home to check out the footage side by side and see how this compares, but I don't want to get any copyright issues or run into any issues like that. So we can see it's pulling strong here, but it's kind of hitting a wall at about 295 miles an hour. And as we come through the finish of the 6.8 kilometers here, you'll actually notice that we don't hit the 304 miles an hour that they hit. And let's dig into that a little bit more and see why. Let's talk about a couple interesting things in regards to top speed runs. So in order for it to be a world record, it has to go in both directions. So a car will do its top speed in one direction, it'll do a top speed in the other, and then it will average the two out. The reason they do that is because of elevation change and wind. So if you have a really strong tailwind, that's gonna increase your top speed by a ton. In the case of the Chiron, they're actually only doing this test in one direction. 
And so there's some issue with the tarmac being grained in one direction. So they actually aren't doing this in two. I'm not trying to take away the record from Bugatti or say this isn't impressive because it's extremely impressive. I'm just trying to give you the details and break down what exactly is happening. And so if you add a tiny tailwind to this run, even as little as six or seven miles an hour, you'll actually get to that 304 mile an hour top speed. So I actually looked up the wind data on that day and there's not much of it, but it says it was gusting anywhere between five and 14 miles an hour. And so I'm going to show you what it looks like to add simply a six mile an hour tailwind into the simulator and let's see what top speed it hits. So I'm not going to bore you with the whole intro to this run. It's now going 299 miles an hour, the same distance as before. And this is with a three meters per second tailwind. So I'm going to pause it real right here and three meters per second is about 6.7 miles an hour. And you can see before our finish mark, it's hitting 303 miles an hour. And if we continue to right before the end at about 56 seconds, it's actually hitting the 304 mile an hour mark. And it even has a little bit left in the tank. So what I'm trying to show here is just how important wind is when it comes to these top speed runs. There's a reason why they make world record runs go in both directions and all world record runs are not the same. Also, this goes to show how much space you need to do a top speed run. Even in eight kilometers, it needs a ton of space to slow down. So it can't even hit its theoretical top speed. This car does have a few more miles an hour left in the tank. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm just trying to shed light on what these top speed runs look like and the physics behind them. I'm not trying to rag on Bugatti or take away anything from the run because it's really impressive. If you want to see me break down another top speed run like the Koenigsegg maybe, let me know down below. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys next time.